much. Thank you very much. It is great to be here with you tonight. It is great to be with you because we've got 100 days to get this man elected as the next Mayor of London. Now, we all know we're here in the greatest city on earth. London is a great city. It's got a lot greater over the last eight years with Boris Johnson as mayor. He did a great job, didn't he do a great job? That's a great city. It's a great city because we've seen huge investment come into London. We've seen improvement in London schools. We've built houses in London. And there's been a real transformation of London's economy. Since I've been your Prime Minister, there are half a million more people in work in our capital city. So we've done great things, but we've got to go on doing great things. Now here's, here's the truth. Great cities need great mayors. Boris was a great mayor, and I believe that this man, Zach Goldsmith, can be a great mayor too. He has got a very clear vision for what he wants to do for our city. Zach knows this is a great city for all the reasons I've just given, but we've got to make it a great city for Londoners to live in. Londoners want to make sure they can get a job that pays well. Londoners want to make sure they can own a home they can afford. Londoners want a city where it's easy and safe to travel around. Londoners want safer streets. That is the agenda that this man is all about. And let me tell you about this man. <laughs> I've sat in Parliament with Zach Goldsmith, and I know who he stands for. I know who he stands up for. Zach is not a party man. He doesn't do things because the party tells him. I know that to my cost <laughs> uh, on occasion. Zach's not in it for the prestige or the fame or the photo calls. Zach has been Member of Parliament for Richmond and he's done an amazing job for people in Richmond. Zach stands... <laughs> Zach, Zach Goldsmith stands for the people he represents, nothing else. And that's what he'll do for London. No party posturing, no funny games, no funny business, just simply standing up and delivering for London. That is the man that we got in front of us, and that's the man who should be the next mayor of London. <laughs> now, Zach's going to tell you about his plan, but it's vital that we've got the right man, we've got the right plan. We built more homes in London, but Zach wants to double the number of homes in London. We're going to build starter homes, we're going to build shared ownership homes, we're going to help people save for homes, we're going to get London building, and we're going to get Londoners owning. That's what we want to do in our capital city. Now, working with Boris, we've done a lot on transport. Crossrail, I think, is going to be genuinely revolutionary for London. But now we need the next stages. And I want to make sure that I work with Zach to deliver the night tube. That's vital. To make sure we really work on improving those suburban uh, rail franchises that the mayor's now going to have control on. There's a really big transport agenda. And you don't need me to tell you that Zach is going to deliver a green London. That's close to his heart. And that's absolutely what he wants to deliver. But I think here tonight it's also important to talk about the fourth element of that plan, the safer streets. You know, we have to recognize the scale of the terrorist threat that we face in London. What happened in Paris, that could have happened here. And I will do everything I can as your Prime Minister to help keep London and Londoners safe. And I know that working with Zach, I'll be able to do just that. A mayor and a Prime Minister who know we've got to be tough on the Islamist extremists that want to divide our country. We know we've got to be tough in terms of providing the extra policemen on our streets. And we know we've got to be tough in making sure there are sufficient armed policemen on London streets so they can respond if they need to in the result of an incident. And that will always be the case when I'm your Prime Minister and he's your Mayor. So that... So you've got the man, you've got the plan, now just think for a moment about the alternative, right? <laughs> we got one man with a record of delivery, and we got another man with a record, right? <laughs> and this is his record. Sadiq Khan, there's only one thing you need to know about him. In fact, two. One, 
he nominated Jeremy Corbyn to be leader of the Labour Party. Two, he doesn't regret nominating Jeremy Corbyn to be leader of the Labour Party. Now, this is serious, and it's serious for Londoners. Never mind the fact that, you know, he wants to give the Falklands back to Argentina, or he thinks that nuclear submarines should patrol the Atlantic without any missiles, or he wants to twin Britain with Bolivia. Actually, I made that last one up, but never mind. You, you get the sort of message. Never mind that. Just think about this for the future of London. This Labour leader, this mayoral candidate, their policy is to bring back and legalise secondary strikes and flying pickets. Now, I'm not that old, I'm getting older, I accept, but I can remember the industrial chaos and the strikes and the dislocation for ordinary hard-working people when we had those things in place. And just think for a moment what having, you know, the first Corbyn elected mayor like in London would be for our economy, for our education for our politics, for our city. It would be a disaster. You do not want to be lab rats in the first Corbyn economics experiment in public life in our country. So we've got to win this. That's the alternative. It's not a referendum, this election. It's a choice. You can have Zach as the mayor, or you can have Jeremy Corbyn's candidate for the mayor. That is the fight that we've got. And we've got 100 days left to win it. So I say let's use those 100 days to get out there door by door, street by street, and tell people about this man, about his plan, about how working with a Conservative Prime Minister, we can deliver for London. We can deliver the jobs. We can deliver the homes. We can deliver the better schools. We can deliver the safer streets. We can deliver the cleaner, greener London that Zach Goldsmith believes in. I'm going to give this campaign everything I've got in the next 100 days, and I want you to do as well. Now let's hear it for Zach Goldsmith. Thank you very much. So, um, hard to follow that. Thank you, Prime Minister, for coming all the way here and for backing my campaign. And thank all of you, all of you, for making the effort to be here. It means a lot. We have 100 days. 100 days before London makes a choice. 100 days before Boris Johnson steps down as Mayor of London. And I think you will all agree in this room that he has been a fantastic mayor. We've yeah. seen... We've seen, I could spend hours telling you, but we've been, seen record investment. We, our streets are safer than they have been for decades. Record number of jobs, record number of startup businesses on his watch. He has put London back on the map. And I have to tell you, I've said this a lot in the last few weeks, and every time I say it, it reminds me just how lucky I am that he's not a candidate in this election. <laughs> but... I've been to every corner of London as part of this campaign. I've spoken to anyone who'll speak to me. And there's one clear theme, one clear anxiety, one clear concern that Londoners have. There is a feeling that a whole swathes of Londoners are being priced out, locked out of their own city. And they are. When an average Londoner on an average income cannot afford to buy their own home, that is a problem. When an average Londoner on a double London average, a sort of double the London average wage, can't afford their own home, that is a crisis. And it's not just a political crisis, it is a social crisis. It's a business crisis, it's an economic crisis, and we need to take it head on. The next mayor, and probably the mayor afterwards, is going to have to find a way of taking that extraordinary success story that is Boris Johnson and turning it into something that matters for all Londons, translating it across the board. Now, last week I launched this plan, which the Prime Minister has just described, more homes. That means closing the gap between what we know Londoners need and what we're currently building, making London more affordable to Londoners. Better transport, that means growing the network. And the reason we need to grow the network is not just so that people can get from one side of London to the other, not just to keep London moving, but because if we grow that network, we unlock the land we're going to need to deal with the housing crisis, which is the number one issue in London. Cleaner air, but it's not just air, it's our environment, our living environment. London has one of the greenest, we are one of the greenest cities on earth. We need to protect and cherish our green spaces. We need to protect our green belt. But we also need to tackle the pollution in our air that is taking nearly 10 
100,000 lives every year prematurely. This has become a big political issue. And of course, safer streets. That means protecting the resources that the police need. It means giving the police our backing, giving them the tools they need to keep London safe. That is what this plan will do. But here's the thing. None of that is possible, none of it, without a mayor who is capable and willing to work with government. And there's a simple reason for that. London depends almost completely on central government for its powers and for its funding. The first line in the job description of the mayor of London is get a good deal from government and hold them to account where you need to. Duff them up if you have to, but get a good deal for this city. That is a prerequisite. And my record as an MP over the last five years, I hope, will prove to Londoners that I will do that. I've held government to account. I'm sure the Prime Minister in the private room would say that I've been a pain in the backside at times. But I have delivered for my constituents day in, day out. And I was rewarded just a few months ago with the biggest swing in my favour, the biggest increased majority in London, but one of the biggest swings in my favour in the country. A big mandate, big green light from the people who know me best. As a mayoral candidate, just for the last few months, I have also delivered for London. I negotiated with government to knock the housing bill into shape. And as a consequence, and I have to thank other colleagues in London, Conservative colleagues and the current Mayor of London, as a consequence, we have a bill which guarantees more affordable homes for London. I campaigned alongside my colleagues to have TfL classified as an essential service, and it is an essential service for almost everyone in London. That doesn't mean that there can't be strikes, and I'm not going to pretend it does, but it does mean that if there are strikes in TfL, that can only happen with a big democratic mandate. And I fought to protect the police budget. It has been protected, and the consequence is that neighbourhood policing will be protected now in every single community in London. And that matters now perhaps more than at any time in the last two or three decades. Now that compares with the alternative. A man, uh, Jeremy Corbyn's candidate, whose record of delivery locally, as you just heard, he inherited a rock-solid, safe Labour seat. He turned it miraculously, in just a matter of years, into a marginal, it, which compares, incidentally, with his record as a minister. He presided, I recently discovered, he presided over a period, as a housing minister, as a period of time where fewer houses have been built since the 1920s. His record is not all that hot. But even more than that, Sadiq Khan cannot deliver for London. And there's a reason for that. He cannot deliver London because he cannot work with people outside his own political party. His entire approach to politics is partisan. He will not attempt to build bridges to people in different parties. He certainly won't engage with the government. The same government, incidentally, that will be in charge, effectively, of London over the next four years. Sadiq Khan is an architect in this madness that we've seen in the Labour Party over the last few months. If he wins in May, we will have four years of inaction, four years of uh, uh, infighting, the same infighting that has characterised the Labour Party over the last few months. We'll see London for four years being treated as a testing ground, a laboratory for Corbyn's radical politics. And that is a price that we cannot pay. Now, London is, we all agree, the greatest city on earth. But we are at a turning point. A decision time awaits London. Now, I have a plan. More homes, better transport, cleaner air, safer streets. But that cannot be delivered by a mayor who will not engage with government. We have just 100 days to go until London makes its decision. And the choice could not be clearer. It's Corbyn's man in City Hall or it's your man in City Hall. Now, I know, I know, I know that London can be made even greater still. I know that and you know that. And I know that with your help, I will absolutely promise you that it will be. So a big thank you to all of you who've come here today. Thank you for all the help you have already given me. I depend on you completely to get over the line in May. So please join me for the next 100 days. We will give this everything we have. Thank you. Thank you.